Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is Be Better Golf Live. This week it's going to be an express edition, kind of, of the show, where uh, uh, tomorrow Monty is playing in a tournament, so he's kind of getting uh, getting loose, coming off of a back injury, and uh, that's no excuse. No excuse though. So zero uh, disclaimers, I guess you would call it. So uh, right now he's just when I uh, when I watch Monty practice, just a little insight here from uh, hanging around him. He hits more wedges than anything else, and more wedges than any other player I've seen. Not only to make his wedge game sharp, but uh, just to leak into the rest of his game for like uh, his sequence and stuff like that. So, uh... looks good, Monty. Come over here and let's let's get this guy. Almost looks like a golf swing. Yeah, almost. Uh, okay, so uh, this week it's going to be mostly about. Um, Playing in tournaments, so then, so Bobby Jones famously, Monty said uh, that there's golf and then there's tournament golf, and they feel they're totally different. You know what? what? Do you, think about that? you know what? I'd like to expand on that. I heard someone say, and you know, it was said about becoming a tour player, but amateurs at every level can can do the five level thing. Yeah. There's five levels. Okay. You got to accomplish what you're trying to do on the practice area, whether it's putting, chipping, hitting okay. a ball. Mm -hmm. Then you gotta take, that's step one. Right. Step two, you gotta take it to the course. Okay. Okay. Step three, you gotta take it to the tournament. Yep. Step four, you've gotta take it to the last day of the tournament at the very end. Mm -hmm. And step five, you've gotta take it to a really, really big tournament. Mm -hmm. So like for a tour player, it would be a tournament, a major, right. Right. Uh, excuse me, a tournament, tournament late Sunday, major on Sunday. Right. So that's the five levels. After practice, the course, then right. those levels. Right. right. Yeah. So, you know, tournament golf, you know, people say, oh, Monty, you're nervous. I'm not nervous at all. It's, you know, if I go out and shoot a horrible number, I'll learn something from it. Yep. What I have to get in tournament mode again, and we were talking about this a little bit last week. Right now, not just in tournaments, but in regular rounds of golf, I'm a 14-hole golfer. Yeah. And the reason why I'm a 14-hole golfer is, is I have to think in order to hit good shots right now. I right. don't have a lot of step into it and hit it right. mode. So and the tough part is that if you take a, a four hole break in your round, you don't know when it's gonna come. It could be the first three holes, could be 12, 16, Could be seven two. and eight yeah, right. and 15 and 16. Yeah, right. And again, could the, random. Yeah. the thing that I, the, the thing that I, mo like look, if somebody came to me and said, you know what Monty, you're gonna play pretty solid, you're gonna make the cut, you're gonna finish in 30th place. I'd be like, that's great. Okay, mm -hmm. but this is gonna sound ridiculous and this is gonna sound like I'm setting myself up for failure and that's not the case at all. I need to learn how to play in tournaments again. Yeah. I need to learn how to be on the 10th hole and recognize that there's a long wait on the 10th hole, I'm running a little bit low on energy, mm -hmm. I need to have some trail mix or a Gatorade or whatever because Every, literally every single round of golf, I, well not every single, 90% of the rounds that I've played in the last five years have been playing lessons where my game doesn't mean two red cents. I'm focusing on the other sure. person. Yeah. And I need to learn how to focus on my game again. So I'm missing those things. Because every tournament I've played, every round of golf I've played, I've been pretty good for 13 or 14 holes. Yeah. And just an absolute wreck for four or five. Where yeah. I don't even look like, you know, a golfer. Yeah. You know, never mind. So that's, I need to go through that learning process yep. again. Cool. So uh, first question in the night we have from Sam is uh, somebody is having a problem laying it off in the transition. That's hard. It is hard. Uh, I steepen it in the transition. Me too. Uh, a lot of other guys, especially, you know, guys, and it's so many people do it. They, they kind of roll in, it in, and then they're, they're here, and up. then they come steep. And then... You know, the other things that you can add to that, the hit impulses to yank on it. Yep. And plus you've had a whole generation of instruction teaching you to yank the handle, ring the bell, pull, right. hold the lag, yes. float load and yank. You have all this leading first. Yeah. It, it, it just gets everybody into this position. So what are some of the common ways when you guy, have a guy that has a, a steepening in the transition? Okay, Th this always gets back where everybody tries th that tries this. Yeah gets really, really frustrated with it initially. Yeah. And it's leading with the right elbow. I've got a video okay. that's probably got 100,000 hits. 
and half the people are like, Monty, this is genius. It shallowed out my shaft. It cured my slice. It did this, it did that. The other half of the people are like, you know what? This doesn't work for me because I hit everything to the right when I first did it. Okay. Well, of course, when you're used to coming like this, look at where that club face is. That club face is closed. That club face is pointed right, over there. Right, put a little line. Thing. Right. Yeah. So the body will react by going like that mm -hmm. to keep it from going way left. Well, now all of a sudden, if you start leading with the right elbow, now look where that club face is. Yeah, it's freaking. It's pointed it's over there. Right. Yeah. So everybody hits it to the right. So then you have to wait for your body to react and bring in step two, which is bring the left arm in. And then that's what squares the club face. Okay, let's try it with me, Monty, because I have this issue a little bit. So essentially, you know, everything, I, well, to say every, whenever you say everything and you relate it to golf yeah, and the golf course. swing, there's always a, but there's a, always a yin and yang, okay? The yin is bringing the right elbow in. So the right elbow, so here I'm gonna go and I'm gonna bring it to my belly button, like you say. Correct. Without yeah. pulling the handle down. Right. Because sometimes and, when you say that, you pull the handle. Okay, yeah. right. See, that's, it's the difference between putting stress on the grip and putting the stress, because look, yeah. yanking, watch this. When you pull on the handle, look yeah. where the elbow goes. Yes. When the elbow goes forward, the butt of the club goes out here. Yeah, the club naturally flattens. Okay, and understand, if you're steep, when you first start working on this, you're gonna hit the ball in the middle of the club face or even off the toe, way over there. Okay. So my main thing is gonna you know, think here and bring that right elbow to the belly button. It doesn't ever get there, but that's the direction yeah, you want Yeah, the intention it to of it, yeah. See? You yanked on the handle, slid the hips, uh -huh. and then got it forward. Oh, okay, okay. Way too late. Okay. It so it, it almost has to be the first thing you do. And not almost. It does have to okay, be Okay, right. Because I still did this, then this, and this, and then got it forward. But yeah. you're saying... Correct. Oh, yeah. So for practice sake, for range sake, let's... Just hit it like 60 yards. Yeah. Hit it six, 50, 60 yards. Okay, excellent. Okay. Right. I was flatter on the yep. way down. Yeah. Okay. You're, sometimes you're going to hit it behind it. Sometimes you're going to hit it thin. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're going to hit it right. You have to get used to the move. Okay. But this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to get it to work forward. Okay. One more 60 yarder and then we'll try to blend in the second part of it. That was much better. That was good. All right. So then you talked to, so that's the right elbow forward to the belly button intention. Then you said there was something with the left arm. Right. You, That's the second see, part. See, now here, here's the thing. You get a lot of people. Yeah. So you got a lot of people that have the chicken wing. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's how they keep from shanking when they're steep. Yeah. So you get steep mm -hmm. and then you pull with the left elbow so the yeah. club doesn't kick out early. Yeah. So now you lead with the elbow and then your chicken wing. That's not going to be very, very good. No. So the people that are steep with the shaft and are used to getting it out here have no idea what rotating and folding the left arm is because look at how shut that club is and look at how far away from it is. Yeah. So if you're used to going like this and you try and rotate the left arm, you're you're dead. Right. So, so you need to feel that in concert, the, the right elbow forward with a... The, the left arm folds, rotates and folds. The left arm... Did you say folds, rotates, and folds? No, 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 you no, no, no. Okay, sorry. I, I said it backwards yeah, right. first. It's rotates and folds. Right, so it's here, rotates and folds, okay. rather than it goes, it goes okay. external like this. So, so, so he, here, here are the two, here are the, the drills that kind of match each other. Cool. The first one is lead with the elbow, mm -hmm. and the second one is your intent from the top of the swing is to touch the elbows. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So what that does is, if you're trying to touch the elbows, you're certainly not going to go like this, mm -hmm. and you're certainly not going to go like that. Yeah. This one's going to come in this way, this one's going to come in that yeah. way. So you don't want to hit it very far because it's very, very strange. Came down the shadow line there. Okay. Right? You don't want to hit it far because yeah. it's going to feel really, really strange, but it's just... And there's a lot of hitting wow. behind the ball involved. That's this one for you to be able to do. Okay. Yeah. But... But the closer you get your elbows, the more your right elbow is shallowing the shaft, and the more your left elbow 
and left arm is squaring the club for you. Okay, so right elbow and come together. Oh, you're right. You're, you're right. It does have kind of Just a... Just try to touch it. Your yeah. intent. See, and then people will go like this. This is the mistake that people make. Oh, I'm going to touch my elbows. Then they start setting up oh, like no. this. And then they start taking yeah. back swings like that. Normal setup, yeah. normal backswing, first intent down, try to touch the elbows. Not bad. Yeah, let me try one. All right. You have good range discipline when you're working on uh, shots. I don't. I always want to hit it so far. Okay. Excellent. There we go. Notice the nice shallow divot you took there. Tonight is like a truncated. Be Better Golf Live Express version. Monty, uh, tomorrow. Uh, I go late, so. Tomorrow, 1.30 at El Dorado in Long Beach. Uh, he's playing in Long Beach Open. Uh, with uh, no real expectations other than to try hard. You know, I know I'm going to make... Talk about expectations. You, you know, my expectations... This is going to sound ridiculous, but I don't... I don't really care what I shoot. Because it's just one week. Yeah. And it's the, kind of the... I played a couple of tournaments early in the year, but this is really my first week back becoming a full-time tournament player again. My yeah. expectations are more, and it's kind of funny how this works, is more about getting back into the process of what it takes to play in tournaments. Yep. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the irony is, if I stay in that process, I'm going to shoot low. Yep. Because mm -hmm. I'm actually hitting the ball quite well, I'm making putts, I'm wedging it well, and if I stay out of results and into the process and this is why tiger was so good he was never into into score results he he got was in the process and tried to hit every shot as well as he could and tried to be you know aware of what he was doing and yeah. and, and that's that's what i lack right now mm -hmm. i am completely unaware of what i'm doing out there mm -hmm. and that's why you know one guy took playing lessons for me on consecutive days about six months ago and I shot, you know, six, eight, ten under. I don't even remember what it was. I made so many birdies. Right. And then the second day, I think I made like one birdie, and I was spraying driver all over the place, and probably shot seventy-seven. Mm -hmm. And he goes, Monty, what was the difference between yesterday and today? I go, it, you know, it, it, I, I beats the shit. You know. Yeah. So, YouTube it does not matter. Exactly. Yeah. You know. So, so I have to learn how to be in the process again. Mm -hmm. And again, it, it, I'm not setting myself for failure. I'm not set trying to make no, your excuses in case I play bad. I'm going to go out there with the intent of shooting as low as I can, and I'm fully capable. And if I go out there and shoot 77 tomorrow, everybody is well within their right to make fun of me because my skill level is well below that. Yeah. But it's about staying in the process, and 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 that's that's what I stink yeah. at that. Yeah. I get an F on that right now. Right. I've noticed that like if if you go out there trying to shoot an entire number got no chance it's really daunting and it's like hard but if you go out there and you just you just try to take the blows as they come and just hit every shot for what it's worth and be like okay i only have to hit this one shot right now right. here and then just so it's not like i want to go out and shoot 69 it's like i want to go out and shoot one 69 times almost yeah yeah and and you know i've got i've got i've got a frame of reference that proves that this is what my issue is. When I qualified, tried to qualify for the farmers earlier this year, yeah, um, you know, I went out there with an expectation because I was playing pretty pretty well, and I opened with consecutive bogeys and bogeyed three of the first four holes, and I'm like, oh, well, this is pretty embarrassing, which was totally the wrong attitude to have. Yeah. So then I just got back into the process. And I made a bunch of birdies, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a chance to make it now. Uh -oh. Then Wrong I was out thought. of the process, yeah, and I made a double, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, you fool. Then I, I got back in the process, made a couple more birdies, and then I come to the hardest hole on the course, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I, I can actually make it. And, you know, I protected and made my worst swing of the day, and hit, drove it into a lake, made bogey on that hole, and I'm like, okay, you know, and then, and then again, went back into the process again, almost birdied 17 and birdied 18. So at the end of the day, I made seven birdies, and which is, I mean, I made the most birdies in the field. Yeah. But didn't make it because I was in and out of the process during the day. And this is not Tony Robbins positive thinking mental nonsense. No. This is no, the way. Cause and effect. This yeah. is the way you play golf. 
you go out there, you do is there's no OV, there's no water, there's no flat. You get up there, you're trying to hit that drive on the first tee as well as you can. Yep. You go find it, you do it again. The guys that do that the best each day are the ones that shoot the lowest. The guys that are like, ooh, I'm three under if I par the last six holes and you know, then I'll be like two shots below the yeah. cut line. To, doing this hacker's math in when, your head. When you, yeah. when you start doing that, yeah. you, you, you've lost. Yeah. You've lost, you know. Uh, okay, uh, so this is going to be our, our second to last question. We'll do this one and then we'll do a quick one. Uh, brief thing, uh, will there be live updates? The tournament does not provide live updates. Uh, I'll be posting some stuff on Instagram though, so uh, subscribe to this Instagram account. Yeah, this, this is what the updates of my round are going to look like. Yeah. Okay, Monty just made his third birdie in four holes. But, and, and then got up on the tee on this really wide hole and hit it in the next fairway over to the right. I don't know what he was thinking on that one. <laughs> right. you know, kidding, kidding aside. <laughs> yeah, no. who knows? And it'll just, it'll just be a quick little snippets. There, there will be some really good uh, content on the YouTube though. Uh, probably like the day after. Uh, okay, so somebody was asking about the A swing. Yes. Uh, it seems pretty similar in some of the concepts to, to what you talk about as far as, okay, this is my understanding of what the A swing is. It is a straight up shaft on the way back and then uh, really flattening on the way down and round it off. That's um, what I think it is. Well, that's a, you, you know, a mm -hmm. bare bones overview of it. Um, I happen not to like it. Okay. Um, I happen to, th now, this is, of course, this is my opinion. I happen to think that it is not a good way to swing the golf club because oh, almost took one off the nail in there. Yeah. Um, I happen to think that it's not a good way okay. to swing a golf club, and here's why: is yes, the slicers who go in and out are going to have an immediate, you know, improvement when they go like this and like that. Yeah. It's really, really hard to make that move without excessively opening the club face yeah. when you shower. Yeah. It's hard, yeah. okay? And, you know, everyone's saying, oh, Lydia Ko, she's winning everything, you know, doing the A swing. Well, yeah, that's because she's Lydia Ko and she knows how to play golf. Yeah. If you look at all the measurable statistics, driving distance, driving accuracy, greens and regulation, they have all gone down since she's been doing the A swing. And in spite of hitting it shorter, hitting it more crooked, and hitting fewer greens, she's, she's, checks. she's still yeah. winning, yeah. okay? So you can't use her as an example of the success. Mm -hmm. Here's the other problem, is the body, the body thinks that this is a steep, uh, this is, shaft is too shallow, and it wants to steepen it. So like if uh, you lay it yeah. off, yeah. it wants to steepen it. Right. Your body perceives this shaft as being too steep, and it wants to shallow it, yep. okay? Your body's best mechanism for shallowing the shaft is going like this, oh, okay? Okay. And I've already witnessed three people came to me who um, they tried the A-swing from a Ledbetter person, right. and all three of them developed some pretty severe, er now I'm sure that- Up like this and trying to flatten it. Yeah. And they, they, all three of them had a bad case of early extension. One of them had a, not a touch, not a bow to the shanks, but he was shanking the occasional ball. And the other two guys had the hooks really bad with their driver. Now, you know, I've gone on record as not being a huge fan of Ledbetter. The guy has made a lot of people better. I'm sure there are people out there that have had success with the A-swing. There's, there's a 100% chance of it because there's a certain section of people that going like this and like this, it's going to help them. Yeah. So it's not, don't, I don't want to sit here and sound like, ah, oh, it's terrible, it's, it's garbage, that's not going to work for, not true. I just don't happen to think it's the easiest and most efficient way to swing a golf club. Yeah. You know? And the other thing about it too is that, it, I would think that it would make your touch shots and your half shots like, pretty difficult because not see, every time are you going to be going here and here. Sometimes you're going to only need this. See, and this brings me to a second point is, is yeah. you have a large section of people out there who want to say that, you know, there's, you know, 15 different golf swings in, 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 in involved. You know, you got the driver swing, a three wood swing, yeah. a, you know, a pitch, a chip, mm -hmm. a putt. When you start having too many, I like to teach one same general motion. You know, if you look at all the things that I teach, like the no-turn cast drill, and the use the bounce, and the do this and do that, 
if you look at it really, really carefully, the moves are actually very, very similar and almost the same. It's just more speed, different, you know, mental approach to the shot. But generally, speed, the amount of speed you're using is the only difference between the different shots that I that, that I teach. Yeah. Okay, guys. So that that uh, like I said, a very short version today of uh, Be Better Golf Live, like Express Edition. Um, so be be tuned. Be sure to subscribe. Have your friends subscribe and your anybody you know with a YouTube account subscribe because this weekend there's gonna be uh, going Thursday, Friday, and then into the weekend there's gonna be a lot of really good content. There's a lot of uh, interesting players playing in this tournament coming up, and we're gonna have multiple cameras covering some different guys. I know uh, Mac O'Grady's playing tomorrow, and if he doesn't like chop my cameraman's head off, but we're gonna get he some might. shots of him, could happen. Uh, you know what? This I'm not I'm not kidding. Um, tell the guy to be discreet. Okay. Well, it's not Max event, but it doesn't I will. matter. It I doesn't will. matter. I'll tell him. No, look, yeah. I've got nothing bad to say about Mac. Yeah. Mac at heart is a really, really good guy, but you know, I've played with him a few times, and he's very anal. Anal is the word that I'll use. I've heard some other people use some different words. I've got I've got nothing bad to say about him. You know, he's a really, really good guy but he wants everything just right when he's playing, you know? And, uh, and okay. if, if he sees- How old is he by this point? 63? He's, he's, yeah, he's gotta be in his 60s. Okay. Uh, so, whatever, we're gonna try, I really don't care. And uh, <laughs> uh, also, Olin Brown from the Golf Channel is playing. Okay, now there, there's a good guy. Okay. Ol Olin, I played with Olin maybe three or four times on the Nike Tour back yeah. in the early 90s. And- He's won on tour, right? Yeah, yeah. I believe so. Um, it's one on the Champions Tour. He won yeah. a major on the Champions Tour. Yeah. yeah. And um, Olin was the f my, at my very first Nike event, the web.com uh -huh. event. He was the only one of the guys, you know, I, of, the, of the players that came over to him and said, you know, wow, you know, I, he saw my little exhibition, the trick shots, the okay. long drive. Okay. Took the time to walk over okay. to me and say, wow, that was really, really impressive. Mm -hmm. And I shot, you know, I missed the cut by a shot or actually, this, now I remember, he he and I tied for first in the Pro-Am on Wednesday. We both shot 65. And he comes over to me and he goes, Monty, great round. You know, we were all curious if you could play. Yeah, and it's, obvious, yeah. it's obvious you can. Mm -hmm. And he goes, let me give you a little piece of advice. I seem kind of hypocritical saying that because I did it too, but don't waste your good round, rounds on Wednesday. Make, just make sure the guys have a good time. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. And so... He is one of the truly good guys in golf, and and and, and you know one of my favorite favorite people I ever played with. Also playing in the tournament that we'll highlight a little bit of is our friend Biebs, uh, Tyler, who's been on the channel before, Justin Collins, who's been on the channel, and uh, and uh, Harold, who uh, has been vlog Tyler vlogging Allen. with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, you know he's one of my, my yep. students, right? One of your one of Monty's students. We yeah. call him Biebs. Yeah, here, so. uh, it's really funny. His his dad sends me a text after he qualified, and he goes. He goes, you playing in the Long Beach Open? I said, yeah. And he goes, I'll tell you what, I'll bet you 50 bucks that Tyler beats you Thursday and Friday. And uh, I, uh, and, and, I, I wouldn't take it. Oh, I took it. Oh, good, Absolutely. Good. And I responded, I said, I don't know whether to take this as a, as, a, as a compliment to my teaching ability or an insult to my playing ability. <laughs> right, right. And he thought that was pretty that is, That's a perfect point. Yeah. Oh, money on the line beyond the uh, $775 entry fee, which is uh, crazy. I think about, 315 or something guys are in the field uh quick math that's a lot of money in there especially for a tournament that has a uh, i think thirty three thousand dollar winning prize it's a good turn golf is tough but it is a very good turn it's a very good turn all right cool guys uh thanks for watching and stay tuned bye i don't understand the idea of maintaining that right wrist angle like this yeah. because if you were tossing a ball, you wouldn't toss like that. Okay, I didn't explain this well enough. I want the weight of the club to act on the right wrist, both back and through. It's a drill, it's a feel. It teaches you how to not narrow the hand path okay. your first move down. Y you literally can't execute it better than that. Yeah. I came in shallow, I didn't have much shaft lean, I, I engaged the bounce, I did everything I was trying to do. Hey everybody, on Be Better Golf right now, you can see this video that Monty and I did. Monty gave me a lesson about pitching because as you've seen in some of my vlogs, it's the weakest part of my game. 
but I really think soon it's going to be a strength and something that I really enjoy doing. Well, you weren't struggling much because after you got the lesson, you beat me in a pitching contest. And a game of horse. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, and it's something, it, it's a move that is really uh, just it's totally, universal. it's universal. It's good for, good for anybody to try it, so try it out. And I really think the information that we had in my lesson is going to be valuable for everybody. So, uh, pitching prescription, check it out.